There you go, Devin McCourty reacting to today's top story. SI legal analyst Michael McCann joining us now. Michael, thanks for being here. Uh, we ask you the tough questions because you have answers and can make a complicated situation easy for us to kind of figure out where we are in this process right now. Has he been charged? Is there a, a warrant issued? What are the next steps for Robert Kraft? So from what we understand, he has been charged, and that is an out-of-state charge. So he's currently, obviously, in Massachusetts, from what we understand, and the charge is in Florida. He will, at some point, in all likelihood, appear in Florida to face the charge. There'll be an arraignment. He could, defendants who are out of state can contest a charge, but I don't think he's going to do that. I don't think he's going to play games with the process. I think in all likelihood he'll comply, and his lawyer will likely appear at a hearing at some point in the near future. Now, he's only one of 25 men who were charged in this initial batch, but in fact, there were other batches that, of charges. In fact, from what we understand, there could be hundreds of people charged in this story. So he's, he's a big name, but he's only one of many. What kind of punishment do these charges typically entail, Mike? And were you surprised at all by the strong and, and quick denial on the part of, of Robert Kraft? Well, in terms of the potential punishment, Phil, he could face up to a year in jail. That would be the extreme, and I, I don't think is likely to happen, given his age, given his lack of criminal record. This isn't someone who has gotten in trouble before. If anything, he's actually been you know, very law-abiding and done a lot of good deeds. He could also be fined. And the judge, though, if he's convicted of this particular offense, one thing he can't avoid is community service. There was 100 hours of community service. And then in addition, he would have to take an educational course regarding sexual offenses. And he would presumably take it with other people. So there would be that part of the story where it's you know, it humiliating, right? The idea of, of having to do community service for this kind of offense. In terms of, was I surprised that he denied it? I don't, I don't think so right now. You know, he's a spokesperson and wasn't a lawyer, from, from what I understand. I think right now it makes, he's going to deny it initially because he wants leverage if he is going to try to negotiate a plea deal potentially. A pretty standard move, you think? Yeah, I think it's standard, and he may be not guilty, right? I mean, we, we know that he is one of many people that has been caught in the, this story, but, and we hear that there's videotape evidence, but we haven't seen the videotape evidence. We don't know what's on videotape. So, you know, let's let's wait and see. Well, that was my question. Can the police just release this video if you have a client stating publicly they're, you know, denying any illegal activity? Do the police control this video? And if it get, is there a possibility it could also be leaked? It has to be shared with Kraft. So anytime, because it's part of the evidence, and clearly it's a key part of the evidence based on what the police chief said, so it, it will have to be shared with Kraft. It doesn't have to be revealed to the public. In fact, the, the police department would in all likelihood refuse any public record requests because it's an active investigation, and they would have grounds to refuse that. Now, will it be leaked? Well, we know that that, that, that does happen at some point. It wouldn't surprise me, given the newsworthiness and given its value, that it is leaked at some point. Michael, really quickly, when it comes to what the league could do with Robert Kraft. We know he doesn't have to be guilty of any crime to be punished by the league. Do you foresee any of what the league has done with other owners uh, in terms of punishment to kind of play a role in whatever they decide to do with Robert Kraft if they decide to do anything? Yeah, I, I think potentially that's right. And, and I would say the Jerry Richardson story is relevant. Jerry Richardson's story occurred in the Me Too era, right, where he was accused of mistreating a number of women who worked for him on the Panthers. He was, of course, fined uh, a little under $3 million. Now, some people have said, well, wasn't he forced out of his ownership? Well, no, being forced out of, he may have been encouraged to leave, but being forced out of ownership requires 23 of the 31 right. other ownership groups. So very high threshold. And I think owners would be pretty cautious in creating that kind of precedent. And, and let's not, certainly this is a serious issue and the idea that, that what Kraft is accused of doing is somehow connected to human trafficking and, and sex trade, very, very disturbing. But what he's been charged of specifically is a misdemeanor offense. And I would be surprised that his punishment would be more than Jerry Richardson, who, well, let's, let's be honest, Jerry Richardson had a, a track record of doing things within his own organization. Uh, this is, from what we understand, two incidents, according to what the police chief said. So I think we would be looking at a fine or maybe a suspension, 
but the, some of the more draconian punishments that I've seen on social media, you know, losing the team, uh, that's not going to happen. Or losing draft picks. Well, that's not really appropriate because the league constitution makes clear loss of draft picks is for competitiveness issues. This has nothing to do sure. with competitiveness. Thank you so much, Michael McCann. We appreciate it. We'll send it over to Michael Hawley now.